That's after a familiar quartet has faced the music. very much. It's my pleasant duty to introduce four people. There's John Amis on my extreme left, while sitting next to him is... <laughs> Frank Muir. <laughs> <laughs> However, sitting on my far right is Ian Wallace, and beside him none other than... <laughs> Dennis Norden. <laughs> While sitting beside me... <laughs> ..is our scorer, Janet Staplehurst. <laughs> We'd also like to welcome, of course, our distinguished audience. Hold it, hold it, please. No, sorry, sorry, got the wrong music. Let's get on with the show. <laughs> John. <laughs> John, those brilliant lads, the Cambridge Buskers, you'll know them, I think. What are they playing here? <laughs> It's a hornpipe version of Pachel Bell's Cannon. No. <laughs> Sometimes known in the business as Cannon You're Fired. <laughs> Do you know it? It's by Dakin. That's called The Cuckoo. The Cuckoo, yes. yes. Le Le have a record of Landowska. The Cuckoo, yes, that's right. Frank, who is this so daintily arriving? clever they don't care what they tackled yeah. <laughs> the only one who really arrives with the word arrives yes. in music is the Queen of Sheba yes, that's she, that is she yes the arrival of the Queen of Sheba Handel Ian what kind what kind of music is this <laughs> I think you may know. <laughs> yes, yes it, it's uh, clearly water music. Yes, that's what it is. Uh, also uh, Handel. Yes. By uh, Handel's water music. And I was laughing because I was thinking of a, a colleague of mine who, uh, when he sang um, Tit Willow from the Mikado, uh, used in the, in the verse where, where he plunged himself into the billowy wave, he used to, do the, used to take some water <laughs> and and sing the, the, that chorus through the gurgling through the water, <laughs> which is a rather it was a rather splendid. Uh, but he always found that it was better to take the water in a bottle and the glass and everything. And he went to this particular concert, uh, looking forward to doing this, and found that he'd taken the bottle of water and the glass, but had forgotten to bring the music. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis, what is this called? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yes. Right. <laughs> it's a bit nasty. Spend the rest wringing out his moustache. <laughs> Dennis, <laughs> what's this called? If you wait for it, there's a tiny hint at the end. With John, Sorry, yeah. Steve. Yes. <laughs> I was going to say up to there that it's not the kind of thing we get at the formation dancing class. But, um, <laughs> uh, 
Uh, would that be the bang that, that John was it indicating was, yes, earlier? Well, it was whatever piece of music he said it was. Which I'm afraid. <laughs> what was it? Packle Bell. Packle Bell's Cannon. Oh, that's Packle what it Bell's was, Cannon, yes. 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 The scene, Monday morning, 10 o'clock, in the old music hall, the pre-war variety theatres. It's band call. That's when the variety acts used to sort out their music with the MD, the musical director. Bill Rayner of Norwich reminded me that each Monday morning's rehearsal, at 2 minutes to 11, precisely, the trombonist in the pit would play, quite regardless of what was going on at the time, used to play, pom, 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 pom. John. What is it, please? And anybody, what did he mean by playing it at that point? What is it? Da -de -da -da -dum well, it's Fingal's Cave or the Hebrides. Yes, thank you. And Fingal's Herder. What, what did he mean when he played? Da -da -dum -ba 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 -ba. Pack up, lads, they're open. Yes, that, they're open. <laughs> <laughs> it signified that the pub next door was about to open. The MD the would put his baton down and say, right, lads, ten minutes. And that was the end of that. There was a th third cause girl on the left as a dead third. <laughs> <laughs> There were actually words that line. Da -de -da -da -dum -bum. Be glad when it's over. Mm. Be glad when oh, it's Malcolm over. Malcolm Sargent, how lovely the sea is. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember once a concert conducted by Fistolari at Sheffield, and all the band knew that at five o'clock, all the cafes in Sheffield closed at that particular time. So they were getting a bit anxious about 20 to 5, <laughs> and about 10 to 5, they were really very, very hot. Um, and uh, one of the trombone said, uh, Mr. Fistolari, what about us tea? <laughs> <laughs> and Fistolari said, oh, uh, letter T, uh, yes, letter T. <laughs> 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 yes, concentration for you, lovely. They say second thoughts are best. Certainly first thoughts aren't always reliable. I remember a, a famous quiz master. I used to be his musical director long, long years ago. I remember he came back from New York. He'd been to see a show and he said it could never open in England because nobody here would ever understand the word that was said. The show was called Guys and Dolls. <laughs> well, he was wrong about that. But let me quote you the words of a doctor. This was in Boston, Massachusetts, who went to a musical show and he declared it to be immoral, revolutionary and obscene. Which show do you think? Well, in Boston, it could have been something like Marriage of Figaro. Yes, it easily could. Yes. Or Mary Poppins. <laughs> Ian, 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 in do you, England do you have, in the 60s. Do you have an idea, Ian, before we bring Frank? HMS Frank knows. <laughs> Not quite. Do you happen to know, Frank, this well, one? Well, in, um, uh, in the 60s, yeah. when Mrs Mary Whitehouse was really, sort of really getting going, um, this was one of the, f the, the first things she objected to. It was salad days. <laughs> <laughs> just, as, just as ludicrous. It was, in fact, in eight, the 1880s, it was the Mikado oh, wow. that he found was immoral, revolutionary and obscene. Yeah. Certainly right. very sadistic, right. as Frank's pointed out in the show before, but uh, hardly obscene, I think. Let me play you a descending major scale. Oh, yes, please. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Yes, right, yes. Oh, Not much of a tune, but it served various composers rather well. John, whose is this? Beautifully played, Steve. It's one of the pieces I loathe most in the whole world. And when I, I always, when I hear it, it's by Johannes Brahms, I always think of G.B. Shaw, who would have referred to him as the Leviathan Maunderer. Yes, it's, maun <laughs> it's Maundy music, isn't it, rather? Yes. Do you know what it is, what it's called? Or Opus it's number an intermezzo in E-flat. E-flat, Opus 117, number one. Yeah. Good egg. Frank, that descending scale is in the second line of a highly familiar song from which show? Show me. You're Adam's apples doing funny. <laughs> it's constricted by the time. Do you have a show it's, to go with the recital? It's carousal. Carousal, thank you very much. Yes, comes up. Ian, if you double the notes, in other words, reiterate each one, you get a sort of thing like this. It goes. And so on. Now, what would that mean? 
think if I was the trombone player in a previous grade, I'd say, I don't know the answer. <laughs> <laughs> No, wait a minute, I, I'm not sure that I don't. It's a um, famous Heifetz arrangement of it. It's, is, is this Horus Staccato? It is indeed Horus Staccato, yes. Very As impressive. Dennis knew because of Harry, Harry James. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And also a, a, a lot of mouth organ players did it. Yes, and accordionists as yes. well. Show Dennis, please. where have you heard this tune, Miss? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, that's, that's um, Laurel and Hardy. Yes. Every Laurel and Hardy film has got that, after the sort of establishing theme of... The, that's it. Yeah. That's right, that's the one. I remember once doing a concert in Greenock in Scotland and beforehand going with my accompanist into a Chinese restaurant to have a, have a quick meal beforehand, and the Muzak was, uh, was largely th th that particular tune and it was marvellous because the waiters all went around. Da, 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 dun, da, dun. <laughs> <laughs> I was always waiting for Laurel and Hardy to come in, but they never oh, did. Wouldn't they that did my music at Sheffield many years ago, and in those days, the, all the restaurants and hotel restaurants closed at nine o'clock. If you remember, we went trotting round and we found a Chinese restaurant with a fountain in the window and coins in the fountain and everything. And we went in, it's totally empty except for the Chinese staff, the whole family, eating pie and chips. <laughs> <laughs> I'd forgotten, or it never happened, either it would did, do. It did, it did. <laughs> For visitations, John, detached though you are from certain aspects of pop culture, you might know who the central figure there is. And how many are there? And you apply. You can see the occasion if you look at the top of the picture. Oh, see yes. what, somebody wearing dark glasses. Yes. Do you know what the occasion was, Frank? Uh, well, it's, it's, it's Michael Jackson, isn't That's it? That's right. It looks like the um, general Michael Jackson. I don't know what... It's, oh, it's in London, isn't it? Yes. Well, look at the top of the picture, please, the very top. Um, Madam... To oh, yes. They've got a waxwork off him. Yes. And he, he opened it. He was going to have a look at it. We didn't open the waxwork. He was going... Well, yeah. <laughs> He well, was whatever going, you do with it, what do you do with it? Well, he's launched it. Oh, I uh, suppose he launched it, yes. Kissed it, probably. Yeah. Michael Jackson. Frank, this visitation oh. caught my eye in a newspaper. What oh. is the musical connection? Well, she's saying, Sid, I swear if you don't cut that beard off, I'm not coming to bed again. <laughs> the oh. musical accommodation is because he went the following day to the Barber of Seville. Oh, to have it done. Yes. Or... I shall accept that very or, happily. Or... Um, well, I, think, I don't think you're going to come up with it all, are you? Because you, you couldn't know, I think. You have your mark. Why, why shouldn't I know if well, I just apply myself to yes, it? Yes, right. What Tell it is, it's the, it's the day before Lent starts. <laughs> <clears throat> and she's saying, I've pressed a slice of cucumber between my palms to, to, because he, he, he's given up cucumber during Lent, you see. And she's pressing a slice here just and he's going to dry it. So, am I bored? Yeah, no, you're absolutely, <laughs> no, you're absolutely right so far. Ah, yeah. fine. And the musical connection is, um, is Poulenc. Mm. You know, the, the, no, the you his, his little uh, cucumber sweet, it's not, not a lot of people know about it. No. Not a lot of people still left <laughs> with the programme. <laughs> played on a flute and well, accordion. Very interesting, you've got your mark. It's Paris a Nobel Busters. Prize winner. Awarded, awakened at his Stockholm hotel by a, a song from Lucia, Queen of Light. Apparently, it happens to all Nobel Prize winners on the morning of their award. This is your Nobel Prize? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what it is. Well, I was near. And she was singing to him. That's the musical connection. Ian. I know a hotel where you can get that without the Nobel Prize. <laughs> Ian, I think it's, it's curious how detached musical performers can become from one another. <laughs> Where do you get these? Well, I, I, I collect them. I, I think that's super. What's happening, please, and why? And, and even where? Well, I would say the cellist is within measurable distance of walking away from it. He looks very angry. Well, <clears throat> I suppose... It's cold, perhaps. This, yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe cold. Not as cold as she is. <laughs> no, well, she's, she's dancing a bit. I suppose this... 
This must be something to do with Swan Upping Sunday. Well, it's, it's, very, it's <laughs> because near enough for she me, is, anyway. She is presumably, as we're by the river, she is, she is uh, doing the, the Swan by Saint-Saëns, and he's playing... Well, not quite. It's Swan Lake, actually. He's playing... He's, he's uh, Peter Halling playing Swan Lake. She's Lisa Caron dancing. Uh, there, but, I mean, the, you, you will agree <laughs> that it's really more likely to be... The, sw the swan with, 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 with just one instrument, which is the cello. Well, the cello, indeed, yes. It yeah. might well have been. I, I might be. They're launching a swan sanctuary near Richmond Bridge in London. Mm. Yes. And oh, well. I'm sure they're the best of friends, I but the camera I'm... just caught them looking rather sort yes. of <clears throat> detached at that I think point. I think that's worth a mark. Yes. Mm. Oh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think I'm nearer it than the real answer. <laughs> yes. Take your pen and give him a mark. Yeah. <clears throat> Dennis, a visitation in the sense that this little gentleman has left his toadstool in Fairyland oh, yeah, yeah. for suburbia. That's not Lord Gnome, is it, that we read about? <laughs> no, it's a very sweet idea, that, isn't it, I think? But yes, you know it's who, a very you know sweet idea. I don't know, that's nothing to do with uh, the swan. Or I, it's a familiar face. Yes. Is, is, he, is he supposed to be playing... Yes, the, the double, double bass. bass, which is his instrument. Is that Tiny Winters? It's Tiny it's Winters. Tiny yes. Winters, yes. It's Tiny yes. Dressed as a Gnome. people get up to. Yes, yeah. yeah. Did he send you this photo? <laughs> yes, he did. He yeah, did, yeah. actually. Yeah. As a card, just as a friendly card, and I said, Tiny, let me blow this up, as the saying yeah. goes. I've had yeah. a big one to show today. Yeah, I remember the, the old days, isn't it? <laughs> Long summers, Tiny Winters. <laughs> <laughs> Great player. Yes. Here's a... Here's a straightforward question addressed to all four of you. It's very simple. How many notes do you hear in this passage played on the harpsichord by Trevor Pinnock? Count them up as you hear them and we'll see who gets the nearest. The excerpt's only 11 seconds long, so you won't have any problem. Now, to make, it, no, to make it even easier, I'll play you it again so that you can, you can check your answer. I want to figure how many notes. Just for instance. say about 14 notes, but many of them repeated frequently. <laughs> no, not really. There's very little repetition. It comes from the bar. Um, chromatic fantasia or fantasia. Me John, how many notes did you think there were? Have a wild a guess. rough guess. I should think about 111. 111 for John. Frank, how many, please? 14. 14. Right. Many of them repeated. <laughs> yes. But 14 uh, different yeah. notes. Ian. 482. 482. <laughs> Dennis. I'll go between John and Ian because they're the two of them know what they're talking about. <laughs> um, 14. I counted more than 14. I know. Yep. Nothing about. Do, do you know that, that passage in Tom Jones, where, which is one of my favourite? He says, It was Squire Weston's habit, as soon as he was drunk every morning, to hear his daughter play the harpsichord. <laughs> <laughs> I love as soon as he was drunk every morning. I don't know. What have you got for 82? That's obviously wrong. Ian, I would say it's um, 350. 350. Well, John gets the mark. He's nearest. The 140. Was the answer? You heard one hundred and forty notes, Steve. I don't want to be pedantic about this. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, you do. <laughs> well, maybe I do. But if there were one hundred and forty notes, a, a, a stave would be that tall, wouldn't it? John, <laughs> would you take him outside afterwards and <laughs> talk to him? Sooner, not. No, <laughs> if it's optional. Me too. Every now and then, I like to return to the subject of one-letter misprints. The poet Stevie Smith, you remember, was delighted once to read a newspaper headline that inquired, Is there life beyond the gravy? <laughs> <laughs> and a supporter of ours in this programme, actually, Norman Brindley of Hatfield, has found a, a My Fair Lady LP, which includes a piece called The Ascot Garotte. <laughs> <laughs> you may find it hard to swallow, I think. Um, a song, then, an opera title, an artist's name, or something you're writing, that suffered, something that suffered a slight misprint, I preferably one misplaced letter. I came across one which makes rather nonsense of the whole thing, and that's a Shropshire dad. <laughs> <laughs> have oh, to have him, nice, don't you? Yes, Presumably by A. E. Lausman. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Well, when so. you wore a tulip and I wore a big red nose. <laughs> <laughs> that wouldn't work, it's just one letter, yeah. 
Ian, have you written something? Scribe. You and the night and the music fill me with flaming dessert. <laughs> <laughs> More than one letter, but we'll, we'll give you that. I, I get sent these by, by people, but I don't know why they send, send me. And there, were, there was a, 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 a My Fair Lady one that somebody sent me that will please um, the macho, which was, why can't a woman be more like a mat? <laughs> <laughs> uh, somebody also, they sent... I, I like it when, when the comment is apt as well. Um, the misprint was, Ina Kleiner yacht music. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the, the viewer said, presumably by the composer of the Magic Fleet. <laughs> <laughs> Ian, I think you'll be pleased with... A great friend of mine in the Hemel Hempstead area, Margaret Cullen, saw a notice up which seemed to her to read, well, it did actually read, Glory to God in the High Street. <laughs> <laughs> you can work out what had happened. Can I, I just I one? Have, I've, I've got one spare. Um, where, have I got anything any wrong? Barmen. It's Bar an Bar opera. Oh, yeah. Barmen <laughs> by B Day. <laughs> <laughs> Barman. I've crossed that up. I've finished now. Yeah. <laughs> Almost time to fly away, I'm afraid. But first, Skylark, mm -hmm. Skylark will be sung by Frank Frank. You ready, ready? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can, can I just sort of settle in a moment? Oh, yes. <laughs> right, here we go. Skylark, Skylark, winging your flight so high. Skylark. Skylark, when you go up in the sky If among the angels, mother, you should see Ask her if she will come down again To poor dear daddy and Requested by quite a lot of people that, but I have to admit that of all the editions of my music, I've never had so many inquiries and requests for a song as for the one that John sang last year sometime and is now to universal delight, I think, going to repeat. It's called The Rose. How did you come by it, John? Well, uh, I was having supper with some friends and Donald Swan, and Donald played this tune, didn't say what it was, and I assumed it was one of his. I, we were all very touched. And then at the end he said, my dear chap, that's not by me at all, <laughs> by Amanda McBroom. <laughs> you know, in that charming little way he has. I know how he talks. I know you how do. he looks Oh, well. you do? Um, Donald. You're talking of Swan Sanctuary. Come on, Donald, where are you? <laughs> there, there he is. He is. <laughs> Here's the lovely song that he introduced to John, The Rose. Some say love, it is a river that drowns the tender reed. Some say love, it is a razor that leaves your soul to bleed. Some say love, it is a hunger, an endless aching need. I say love, it is a flower and you its only seed. It's the heart afraid of breaking that never learns to dance. It's the dream afraid of waking that never takes the chance. It's the one who won't be taken, who cannot seem to give. And the soul afraid of dying that never learns to live. When the night has been too lonely and the road has been too long and you think that love is only for the lucky and the strong, just remember in the winter far beneath the bitter snow lies the seed that with the sun's love in the spring becomes the rose.
Weston and Lee, two ingenious British songwriters, I believe they made a practice of writing a song a day, didn't they, Dennis? Mm -hmm. Anyway, they kept up a terrific standard. Here's another one of theirs. Right. In our little garden subbub, far away from the noise and the hubbub, when you're tired of the pubbub, tired of the clubbub, take a little house in the garden subbub. There you can grow stewed rubbub. You can bath in an old rain tub up. So leave all the hubbub and the pubbub and the clubbub and grow your own grubbub in the subbub. <laughs> In the Lincoln of my youth, there was an elegant tea shop cafe known locally as Bootsy's Is. And there a, a quartet used to play selections. They'd play Lilac Time, Haken's Serenade. And whenever they played anything by request, they put up a huge sign that said, By Desire. <laughs> lovely. Well, here's something by desire. Ian and I have done a sort of mutual by desire. He, uh, I've asked him, I've desired him to sing a lovely song called Skylark, not... Um, Frank's different one. Oh, and he, he has desired me to play my tune of Nicola. So, first of all, Nicola and then Skylark. Someone's waiting to be kissed Skylark Have you seen a valley green with spring Where my heart can go a journeying Over the shadows and the rain To a blossom-covered lane And in your lonely flight Haven't you heard the music in the night Wonderful music Faint as a will-o'-the-wisp Crazy as a loon Sad as a gypsy Serenading the moon Oh, Skylark I don't know if you can find these things But my heart is riding on your wings so if you see them anywhere, won't you lead me there? We, we thank you, don't we, Ian? We, th we thank you. Yes. And we've completely well, forgotten that quiz that was going on earlier. A victory, I'm told. For John Amos and Frank Muir. Till we meet again. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>
viewers in Scotland can see the programme at 